Let's take a look at another example. Now, once again, the first thing we have to do is identify the longest carbon chain in the molecule. Here, it's still pretty simple. It's just going to be this one in the horizontal plane. Now, it may not always be. So depending on how tricky your professor is, you may want to investigate as to whether there is another direction that is going to give you a longer carbon chain. So definitely be careful. Make sure you are selecting the longest carbon chain possible. So now that we have identified the longest carbon chain, we must decide which direction to number it, left to right or right to left. Again, we're going to choose the direction that gives a substituent occurring soonest. In this case, we're going to have to number right to left because a substituent occurs on the second carbon from the right, whereas from the left, it would occur on the third. So we're going to number this right to left. And we are going to see that there are therefore two alkyl substituents. We have a two carbon substituent here and a one carbon substituent here. So that means that this molecule overall is a heptane and there is a methyl substituent and this two carbon substituent is an ethyl substitu substituent. So we know that this is a heptane, but now separately from the algorithm that we use to number the molecule, a different algorithm is going to be used to figure out in what order we name all the parts of the molecule. So we are going to have to list these in alphabetical order. So uh, ethyl starts with E, methyl starts with M, and for that reason alone, we are going to list the ethyl group first on the carbon that it occurs. So that is 5-ethyl. 2-methyl heptane. So once again, this is a completely arbitrary rule, but if we all follow it, we will be able to come up with the same name for the molecule, E before M, ethyl before methyl. Uh, just as a point of convention, in between words and numbers, we will have a hyphen, and later we will see that in between numbers, there is a comma. Let's look at a slightly trickier example. <clears throat> Once again, the first thing we're going to do is identify the longest carbon chain. Okay. Now, in the case that we have a substituent occurring at the same position, regardless of whether we begin numbering from the left or the right, we are going to give priority to the substituent that occurs soonest alphabetically. So in this case, because they are both alkyl substituents, they have the same priority. Later we will see other types of substituents that take priority over alkyl, but in this case we're just going to go with alphabeticity. So we have a methyl and we have an ethyl occurring on carbon 3, regardless of whether we start from the left or the right, but ethyl before methyl alphabetically, so we will number right to left. Okay, so now we identify that we have a methyl group on carbon 5, a methyl group on carbon 4, and an ethyl group on carbon 3. Now, if it is the case that we have multiple substituents of the same type on a given molecule, we're going to list them simultaneously with a prefix indicating how many of them there are. But that prefix will not be taken into account for alphabeticity. So, ethyl still is before methyl, so we will write that first. So we have 3-ethyl, and then we are going to say 4,5 dimethyl heptane. Okay, so the point is that we have identified that there are two identical methyl groups, so we want to list them at the same time, but with the prefix di indicating that there are two of them, and then the numbers 4 and 5 separated by a comma indicating that they occur on carbons 4 and 5 in the molecule. However, it remains the case that E before M. In other words, these prefixes, which would be di, tri, or tetra, uh, do not, uh, are not taken into account for the alphabeticity. Okay, now let's take a look at a couple of groups that uh, have names that are common names. They don't follow IUPAC rules, but we use them so frequently that we're going to need to know uh, how to use them uh, regardless. So 
don't pay attention to the main molecule. I just drew a molecule to show you these different kinds of substituents. This first one is an isopropyl group. So it's a propyl group because it is a three carbon alkyl substituent and iso is regarding to the shape. Basically, if it were a straight chain propyl group, we would just have one, two, three carbons extending from the main chain, but this is an isopropyl group because the center carbon is connected to the main chain. And now we have a couple of butyl alkyl substituents. The sec butyl group is a four carbon substituent and it is connected by one of the middle carbons, whereas the tert butyl group is connected in this fashion and the isobutyl group is connected in that fashion. Now the names sec and tert come from the fact that if you were to uh, remove this from the main chain, you would see that it is a secondary carbon that is attached to the main chain, whereas if you remove this, this carbon here would be a tertiary carbon that is connected to the main chain. Tertiary meaning it is connected to three other carbons. Here, secondary meaning it is connected to two others. And then the isobutyl group looks like this. So these are some common names for a few alkyl substituents that we're gonna to have to know because they come up a lot. Now, one other interesting point about this is that sec and tert are prefixes that just like di and tri are not taken into account for alphabeticity. So sec butyl is B for butyl, but for some reason, and I really honestly have no idea why, the prefix iso is taken into account for alphabeticity. So isopropyl is I for isopropyl, not P for propyl. So just keep that in mind. Uh, for alphabeticity, what ISO is doing, but all of the other ones, you do disregard the prefix for, alpha <clears throat> for alphabeticity. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials, and as always, feel free to email me with questions, professordaveexplains at gmail.com.